Hey, yo. I'm Angela Yee. My guy B Dot is here. My name is B Dot. Angela, my favorite Blasian. Oh, who else is there? That just, you like? just you. Oh. Just you. All right. <laughs> um, well, we have a Friday, so you know what that means New Music Friday. And B Dot, I know as a journalist, quote yes. unquote, uh, slash blogger, you have a lot of information, a lot of opinions. I have a couple. Uh, that you're not afraid to share when it comes to new music. So we'll be talking about that today. Let's do it. I think Mano has a uh, project out today, too, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, shout out to my guy, Mano. Mano! Also, Honey Baby is going to be joining us today. You like her music? Honey you talking Baby? to me? Yeah. Oh, I'm not too familiar. All right, good. Don't worry. We got you. We're going to play it. We're going to play it for you. She has a <laughs> song right now. People talk about effing him, too. Oh, wow. And it's uh, Samples SWV. You're going to love that. But let's get this show started with some love and positivity. Let's shine a light. 800-292-5150. Call us up and let us know who you want to spread some love to on a Friday. It's way up. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. All right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee. B Dot is here. My name is B Dot. I'm here. And let's shine a light. You know who I want to shine a light on today? Who's that? Um, Marcus Hammond. Now he started the Black Food Truck Festival. Mm. It's an event in South Carolina, okay. and he actually moved to Charleston to play basketball for the College of Charleston. He fell in love with the city, and then he stayed in the area, worked in the baking industry, and then he created the Black Food Truck Festival in 2022. It brought out 5,000 guests. Wow! During its first year, everything from soul food, seafood. Uh, staples out there and it was super popular so he left his corporate job to focus on the event full time wow. and so this year over 15,000 people are estimated to come out and go uh, to the park exchange park fairgrounds and so shout out to him for that that's a dope idea he did he fed, it's like a food festival but with food trucks he fed 5,000 no 5,000 guests showed up it's different it's a food truck a black food truck festival okay so it's all different food trucks and people get to come out and sample different foods from all these say, different food trucks if he fed 5,000 that's Jesus level man so now they have uh, different additions to the festival like rhythms and booze they have a workout the melanin times uh, black food truck festival AM workout that they have a trappy after party and all of those things. <laughs> well, I'm hungry. But that sounds like fun. I love a good food festival. And this also helps highlight all of the black food trucks in the area. Let's get something to eat after this. All right. Well, shout out to you, Marcus Hammond. Now, who do you guys want to show some love to? 800-292-5150. April, who you want to shine a light on? Uh, my fiance. His name is Dada Perry. I like that name. That's cool. Dada Perry. He sounds famous. Yeah, he's doing his thing. He loves you. So I'm like, listen, I got I to gotta shine him out today. I got to shine a light on him. He's doing awesome with his podcast. Okay. That Dada and Still 90 series. I like that. So talk to me about this podcast. How can we listen to it? So he has different interviews. He's interviewing different artists, whether you entrepreneur, up and coming, actress, anything. He's, he's into everything. On the fiance side of things, right? How long have you guys been engaged and, and together before that? Okay. We've been together, what, eight years? Ooh. Okay. And it's real. He's, a, he's an awesome guy. Okay. And we have a daughter. And um, we're, we're doing our thing. All right. Well, I know he loves hearing from you because your energy is amazing, too. So shout out to you and Dada. I try. I try. <laughs> All right. Thank you for calling, April. Okay. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. All right. Well, that was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150. And when we come back, we have your Yeetie. And let's talk about Jeezy versus Jeannie Mai, the allegations. Uh, there's all kinds of records. We'll tell you what Jeezy's saying, plus what Jeannie Mai is saying. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out to me. Angela spilling that Yeetie. Don't do it. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee and B-Dot is here. My name is B-Dot. I'm here, Ange. All right, let's get into this Yee So Post Malone has another diamond single. Wow. That means 10 million total equivalent units in just the United States. That is his ninth diamond song, the song Wow. Mm. So now he's the artist with the most diamond certified songs ever. White Iverson, Psycho, mm -hmm. Rockstar. Uh, the closest person to him actually has six and that would be bruno mars wow the white rapper to white rock star pivot is fascinating because mm -hmm. you have like kid rock post malone machine gun kelly jelly roll they start off as rappers and they pivot into like other genres other uh, genres well speaking of eminem he has um announced his new album the death of slim shady yes and he actually put out a trailer for this and here's what it sounds like 
Through his complex and oft-criticized tongue-twisting rhymes, the blonde anti-hero known as has had no shortage of enemies. He's not a friend. He's a psychopath. <laughs> the same rude lyrics and controversial antics may have ultimately led to his demise. So who killed Slim Shady? Join me as we recreate the events that led to the murder of Slim Shady. Okay. I don't want Slim Shady to die. You heard 50 Cent saying he's a psychopath, too. <laughs> and that 50 calling somebody a psychopath means he's really a psychopath. <laughs> that first album from Eminem is amazing, man. It's one of my favorites. All right, well, get ready for that this summer. And Metro Boomin says, somebody please tell Eminem I'm trying to lock in. Please. Please. I'm sure he can make that happen. And he also um, got his sixth music video with over one billion views on YouTube. Wow, it's so. a lot of AdSense money. Okay, I'm not <laughs> mad at it. Listen, get get your money yes. every way you can. Uh, Jeezy and Jeannie Mai. I cannot believe yeah. that their breakup has spiraled the way that it has and so now there are some court documents that were filed mm. um, and and the Jasmine brand actually got the exclusive okay. for all of this. But Jeannie Mai is accusing him of domestic violence. What? She's stating that he abused her four different times, including choking her and pushing her downstairs at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco. This was in April 2022 and that he also punched her in the face weeks after she gave birth. Whoa, I've known Jeezy to be a trapper, not a scrapper. Well, you know, she claims that he subjected her to physical abuse and their child to neglect during an event in December 2022 and that he choked her out and called her a uh, effing B and claimed that he couldn't wait to divorce her. She also claims that he had a drinking problem and his violence would escalate when he was drunk and that he once left their daughter alone with an AK-47 in a Louis Vuitton bag and that he would also subject his eldest son to the same type of abuse. Now, Juzi has responded to these allegations. Um, he also put out some text messages what he showing that there was a golf cart incident that she got some bruises from. Okay. And then he also uh, said that the allegations are not only false, but also deeply disturbing, especially coming from someone I loved. This malicious attempt to, to tarnish my character and disrupt my family is ridiculous. It's disheartening to witness the manipulation and deceit at play. And at this time, my main concern is being an active father to our daughter as I continue to fight for court mandated joint custody. Damn, this is messy, man. Yeah, it is super messy. And all I can hope for is that they somehow work through things so that their daughter together, Monaco, can have both of her parents in their life and that they can figure out how to co-parent, uh, you know, productively, because right. that's a space that they're going to have to get to in some way, shape or form. You know, originally he had wanted sole custody and mm -hmm. then he filed for joint custody. He's saying that it's been difficult because he's blocked. So he hasn't even been able to speak to his daughter on FaceTime. Damn. But Jeannie Mai has her own allegations as well. So we'll see how this all plays out. That is your Yee T. When we come back, we have about last night. That's where we discuss what we did last night. I just got back from L.A. last night and we'll talk about that. Oh, it's way up. So, about last night, here's how it went down. Beat, I got money. Look at his kit, the New York Yankees sweater. Is that an uh, alligator? It's about it's last night. It's way skin. up. That's not, yeah, what is that? <laughs> That's amazing. Skin. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, this time for about last night. That's where we discuss what we did. I just got back from L.A. Okay. Um, I'm working on a docu series. I'm not supposed to say what it is yet, but with P. Frank Williams, it's going to be for Tubi. And when I tell you, I was in and out of L.A., but that long flight and that time difference, and then yes. I had to work all day and stand on my feet, and you know. Well, but it, I think it's going to be very impactful. What was your seat? Did you have a good seat coming back to New York? I was in Delta One. Oh, and if the you aristocrat. Guys know that you get to lay down. But I'm gonna say this: on the way back, I was um in at LAX. Delta One is now downstairs. They like did a whole yeah. new space for it. Oh, you know about this? I've heard, I'm familiar with it. Why did when I walked up, the woman acted like I wasn't supposed to be there? <laughs> you got racially profiled. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was a little offended, and I wanted to say something. <laughs> so I walk up. And I'm like, okay, good. She's like, I need to see your boarding pass. I pull it out and she's looking at it. And she's like, why is this blue in the background? This is weird. I don't know. Um, give me a second. And I'm like, what? Wow. She really, and she let everybody else walk in. And she was like, give me a second. And I was definitely the only black person. And she was a non-black person. Mm. And so then I walked in and everything was fine. The woman was like, oh, thank you. I'm a million miler. Just to put that out there. Because um, I fly a lot. I, yeah. you know, I, I work a lot. And so I went through, but I, I felt weird about that. Like, how dare you act like I'm not supposed to be here, but every white person is walking through, no problem. But you don't like the fact that I have a blue background. I showed you my boarding pass. Wow. 
But yeah. Racially profiled on a Delta flight. But I tell you what else I did. I laid down and watched them. So you ever see Why Women Kill? It's a series. No, I, I haven't heard about it. I actually enjoyed it. Okay. You didn't like you got it? Got any ideas? Dan doesn't like it, my producer. What's, <laughs> what's the problem? Only My issue with it is that my fiance likes all the like that crazy content. Oh, man. So for me, it's just like. I enjoyed it. I got to finish it because, you know, sometimes on the flight, they only show you some. Now, right. what did you do last night? I went to a rap show. I went to go see Benny the Butcher at Urban a Plaza. Show. Yes. Oh, I saw it. Was a sold out show? It was sold out, man. Mm-hmm. It was packed. It, it smelled like blunts and baggy jeans. So you fit right in. Yeah, I was right right in the middle of it. Your jeans be a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> you grown. Yes. <laughs> but it was a good time, man. Shout out to Benny the Butcher. He brought out uh, his new artist from the BSF crew, Flames. Malik, El Camino. So it was a good time. You've been out and about. You went to Skilla Baby. He's yeah. Album okay. I went to Skilla Baby. He had an album release party. Um, it was actually a listening party, and okay. um, that was cool. So some of your lip service co-hosts there. Yeah, he's gonna be on lip service on Tuesday. Well, that is about last night. And when we come back, tell us a secret. 800-292-5150 is a number. This is a time you ready for this beat up when yes. people call in, and we don't judge them. They remain anonymous. They tell us a secret. It's Friday. Usually on Fridays, the secrets get the craziest. Oh boy! But that's okay. We done heard it all, seen it all. You've done it all. 800-292-5150. Call us up and tell us a secret. Shh. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. B-Dot is here. My name is B-Dot. I am here. And it's time for you guys to call us up and tell us a secret. And remember, it's Friday, so make it good. Okay? We're not going to judge you. Maybe a little bit. Although people on Instagram may. And (laughs) can't help that. And on YouTube, Way Up with Yee. But again, you get to stay anonymous, so it doesn't even matter. Maybe people will recognize your voice. But, you know, maybe you don't care. 800-292-5150. Anonymous call it. Tell us your secret. All right, my secret is hold on. Let me just shout out and say that I am a bird and I don't care what a cat will be. But I am in love with a married man. And I've been knew he was married, but I didn't think I was going to fall for him. But it is his birthday, and I just want to say shout out. No, wait, hold on. Slow down, slow down. So you're in love with a married man? Yeah. You knew he was married? Yes, but I didn't think that I was going to fall for him because my thing is listen, men is only good for two things. And money, that's it. Damn. But for some reason, he got me, and now I'm just caught up. And it's his birthday, and I just want to give him a shout out. Is he an older man? Yes, he is, but you would not think that, because the way he works, ooh. Oh, wow. Uh, So what's his situation with his wife? Is he still in love with her? Is he, like, what's going on with that? He seems to remember her every time he gets mad at me, but then, you know, I put that tenderoni on him, and then he remembers. <laughs> I get him back focused. Does his wife know about you? No. Wow. Do you do you feel bad? Are you hoping that he's going to leave her? What are you trying to think is going to happen? Of course I am. Every chance I get, I sure do. See, I'm not a liar with my I hope that fail. I hope they get a divorce. Wow. So we can get married the next day, because that is good. So what is what are you going to do for his birthday today? Oh, we're going to have a threesome. You know, I got to keep it interesting. I got to keep it. I got to do all the things like we wouldn't do. Do you like threesomes or are you only doing that to try to keep them around? Oh, please. Oh, like I said, I was using men for bleep and money. So, you know, I love me a girl. But the more the merrier. See, I'm open-minded, so I don't care. Wow. Does he try to get his wife to have threesomes with you? He did mention it say that he would want that. Well, when I seen the pictures, she was good as hell. I was with it, but, you know. He's probably taking it slow. Wow. How much older are you guys apart? I'm 32 and he's 56. Wow. But he wow. looks like he's 23. Yes. He That's what I said. Daddy. But then when he, when he put it on me, I was like, oh, wow. What the <laughs> hell? Does he sleep with other women or is it just you? I am not even worried about that because the way he put it on me, <laughs> listen, I don't even he, know. He must have I never asked. What does he do this when you say put it on me? Word. Like, what is, what is that entail? What does he do? Uh uh, girl, you know how crazy this information. <laughs> nah, he just, he just real out of experience, you know? Okay, all right. Angela wants it for herself. No, I don't. Okay, I'm okay over here. I'm okay over here. All right, well, thank yeah, you. Thank you. I feel like she don't even want to be anonymous, but thank you for calling. <laughs> 
Okay. See, it's no judgment, be that. We should play Jeremiah Birthday Sex. <laughs> we should play Honey Baby. I'm effing him too. <laughs> She'll be on the show later today. Whatever comes first. That's what she said. All right. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret. 800 292 5150, in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have your Yeeti. And let's talk about Amanda Seals and Shannon Sharp, the Club Shay Shay interview. We'll tell you what happened during it and the aftermath when it was done. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's feeling that yee tea. Come and get the tea. All right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee, and B Dot is here. My name is B Dot. Happy Friday, Ange. Yes, happy Friday. Uh, well, let's get into some Yee Tea, let's and do this it. is a lot right here. But Amanda Seals was on Club Shay Shay. Okay. And their sit down went viral again. Again, <laughs> yes, people really go on there and and spill their guts. And so Amanda Seals has a lot of, had a lot of things to say, and you know a lot. Uh, lately, she's been talking about how she feels that she's been ostracized mm. from a lot of um, events, a lot of black events. She gets painted as a mean CEO girl. Awards. Uh, she was talking about Essence canceling her interview with uh, the CEO. Yeah. And so in this interview, she talked about Insecure and the issues that she had on that show. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's been documented. This also had Issa Rae trending as well as Amanda. Mm. And here's what she had to say about feeling like she was not protected by Issa Rae. And so I've always protected Issa. However, there's just been enough instances at this point where I should have been protected by Issa and I wasn't. And now it's at a point where my protecting of Issa has become turned on to me and something that people are using against me. They keep saying, you know, that I'm this mean girl on this set. I just want to point out something very basic. How can I be a mean girl on a set that ain't my set? All right. So there was an instance and this was something that went viral where she was attending an event that Issa Rae's publicist was doing. OK. And she was asked to leave. She first was told she wasn't on the list. Then she got inside and the security came and made her leave. And that was a, a terrible experience for her. She tried to crash the party. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, she was. Uh, listen, they don't get along her and Issa's publicist. And she felt like Issa should have kind of figured out that situation so she would feel safe on the set okay. while everything was going on. Um, and I will say to the point of Issa Rae, because I saw people in the comments saying Issa Rae is amazing. I'm not going to hate on Issa Rae, but I saw the flip side. There are people who definitely can treat a lot of other people well, but not be good to you. And you can have a bad experience with somebody who other people really like. So I've personally, I Man. think we all have personally had that experience. What happened to the black girl magic? It sounds like voodoo right now. Okay, B dot. Sorry. Now another thing Amanda Sales talked about was uh, her autism spectrum disorder diagnosis, and here's what she had to say: If my father had lived with me, I would never have been the person I am now because he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to handle it. And I believe that he is autistic too. He's a bril <laughs> no, because he he's brilliant. But you can be brilliant without being autistic, though, right? Hell yeah! <laughs> but just because I'm both, but I'm gifted and autistic. Yeah. All right. Wow. But then afterwards, she did say on her own live mm -hmm. that she was never diagnosed by a doctor with autism. Here's what she said. No, I have not been clinically diagnosed by a doctor because I'm not paying ten thousand dollars to do that. And most people will tell you that at this age, you don't need a clinical diagnosis in that sense. All right. Wow. And then she went on Instagram and said, uh, Shannon, but have you been clinically diagnosed me? Yes, there is a clinical diagnosis for autism. He then hung his head and exhaled in frustration because I did not answer his question. This is called deflection. Why? Because I was not going to be pressured by this man who is interrogating me with absolutely zero love for me into proving something to him that by his line of questioning, he had already committed to undermining. I understand my response may be confusing to some, but I am clarifying it as I did in my life. And that is enough. Wow. All right, now, um, she also detailed racist encounters that she had growing up. Here's what she said. And I was in the situation at Disney. I was there as the only black girl. And so I was called an N-word. I was also bullied while I was there because I was told that you're only here because you're black. So that's what I'm being told by the other children. Does that suffice as racist to you or would you want to call it something else? Yeah, the kids. Now, we're talking children, not functioning adults. Now, if you told me the adults, parents were telling you this or the execs or people that are in charge of Disney are telling you this, I could agree with it. Wow. Okay. Minnie and Mickey are half black and white, so... Are they? 
<laughs> oh my gosh, Vita, get out of here. But a lot of people criticize Shannon Sharp for trying to invalidate her experiences with racism when she was growing up. I've been told I only got into college because I was black by some white students, the college that I got into. So I can understand her frustration with that. And here's what Shannon Sharp had to say while he was speaking with Ocho Cinco and Gilbert Arenas. I think sometimes, you know, she thinks everybody's out to get her. And I do believe some of the people have done her wrong because that's what you deal with. We all go through it. All right. Well, a lot more to it, but that is your UT. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. Make sure you watch the full interview so you can get all the context. Um, and let's talk about a, about a billionaire. He faked his own death so that he could be with his lover. And wow. it worked for a little while until it didn't. It's way up. News. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. All right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee. B-Dot is here. My name is B-Dot. Yes, I am. <laughs> and let's get into this under the radar story. This right. is crazy. A billionaire, Carl Erevin Haub. He's a German U.S. dual citizen. He was 58 at this time. Okay. He faked his own death so that he could be with his Russian lover in Moscow, according to reports. Wow. He was also the former managing director of a German retail giant called Tangleman Group. The last time they saw him, he was on a mountain lift. Um, that was in 2018. And then he was reported missing the following morning because he did not return to his hotel in the Swiss resort. A search for him was officially called off later that year. And three years later, he was formally declared dead by mm -hmm. the district court where he lived. And uh, the evidence to have him officially declared dead was submitted by his wife, his brothers, and his company. And then his younger brother was named the sole CEO of the company after he vanished. And he also swore that he had no information that his missing sibling could still be alive. Now, his younger brother, Christian, is also being investigated by the state prosecutor's office, saying that he could have allegedly given some false statements. But they did find that he was living with his... Uh, with his mistress. We got to see a picture of this chick, man. Yeah, she, the one that made him give up everything and pretend to be dead. He's a billionaire. <laughs> the fact that he is still alive, there were some photos that appeared to show him in Moscow. And they said these photos were also available to his brother Christian at the time when he gave that sworn statement. But they did find that he was um, alive and they have indications that he could have caused his disappearance intentionally. And that at least parts of his family were aware of it and against their better judgment, kept this secret from the court and from the public. Wow. Yes, a younger Russian woman is who he allegedly has been living with. And she works for an event management company. Wow, you got to find them and get them on lip service. Can you imagine being so in love with somebody that you leave everything behind, pretend to be dead, fake your own death? It actually works. Wow. For some years until they see pictures of you. <laughs> you blew up the spot. All right. some selfies. Well, he could be in a lot of trouble right now. So, and and who knows about life insurance too? Because his family probably got his life insurance, and now you got to pay that money back. Right. All right. Well, that is your under the radar. I mean, there's an over the radar story. Everybody's talking about is TikTok, and ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, would rather shut down that app than sell it because, according to a law passed by Joe Biden, they would have to sell. TikTok for it to be accessible here in the United States. You could buy it, Ange. And they said, we aren't going anywhere. No, I'm buying furniture for my <laughs> house. I don't have any money to buy TikTok. Unless they're selling it for like 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is your Under the Radar. And when we come back, we have the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. Plus, we have a special guest. Honey Baby is going to be joining us. Her album, Three Words, Eight Letters Deluxe, is available now. Um, it's Way Up. Way Up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and B-Dot is here. My name is B-Dot. I am here. All right. Well, Drake's tailor-made freestyle diss to Kendrick Lamar has been pulled, and that is after what? Tupac's estate threatened legal action. This has AI vi vocals from both Tupac and Snoop Dogg, and here's what that sounded like. Kendrick, we need ya. The West Coast Savior. Hey, Grady, your name is some hip hop history. And you deal with this viciously. You seem a little nervous about all the publicity. Canadian lights get dark. We need to know the baby West Coast victory, man. Call him a to me. All right. Wow. There was a cease and desist uh, that was issued earlier this week. And Pox Estate said the estate is deeply dismayed and disappointed by your unauthorized use of Tupac's voice and personality. Not only is the record a flagrant violation of Tupac's publicity and the estate's legal rights, it is also a blatant abuse of the legacy of one of the greatest hip hop artists of all time. Drake never said it was Tupac or Snoop Dogg. I know, but a label could say the same thing in that case. Or, you know, anybody could put out a song that sounds like someone's voice and 
likeness and then say I never said it was him. Oh, people do sound like each other sometimes. So we'll see how this one plays out. All right. But Drake has not commented on the cease and desist, but uh, he did remove that song. So we shall see. I bootlegged it. What voice was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Neo. Whew. He has two kids with this woman, Shadai Banya Reese. Okay. And she was on live showing him. And she basically was calling him uh, Baby Diddy. Talking oh, about the freak offs that he's been having. Allegedly, here's what she had to say. Diddy Jr., tell him about the freak off. He calling the police, y'all. Uh, you know what you did. Your body slammed me on the floor. Tell him the real you. What did I ask of you? All of that is irrelevant. All of that is irrelevant. Okay, so you calling the bullies. Over what? Over what? Because he want over the house while his kids is here. I wonder if people feel embarrassed after they post it. Well, she did apologize. She went on social media and said, so I'm drinking my boba tea. <laughs> I've never had boba tea. Me neither. It's good? All right, Dan says it's good. I'm um, talking to my dad on the phone, self-reflecting, and I'd like to apologize for putting you all in our business. Emotions were heightened, and I want the best him to show up, but I understand you can't make people feel you. I have a good faith. Everything will come together. Full moon was out. Cycle on. Postpartum. <laughs> built with frustration and a lot underlining issues that we need to be addressed. Um, trying to do that with the problem present made heightened emotions. I'm human. I heard too. And I want the best for everyone. That's all I was fussing for. Nothing more. Some understanding. She blamed the eclipse. Once they start blaming the planets, you know something wrong with her. Well, she did say postpartum. Okay. That's a real thing. That is a real thing. So, yeah, now. All right. Well, that is your Yeeti. And you know it's a new music Friday. Yes. We can't play with that. So there's some new music that we're going to talk about that is out today. Be that I know you have a lot of strong feelings. So <laughs> strong opinions. Strong opinions. Let's get into some new music Friday when we come back. It's way up. But in the meantime, let's flash it back to future with this classic mask off. It's way up. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know. You should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my guy Bida is here with well, me today. Bida. I'm here. And it's time for Ask Yee. 800-292-5150. Any question you have, we're here to help you out. We got Coco on the line. Hey, Angela. Hey, I'm here. Bida's here to give you some advice. So, we're a new upcoming podcast from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we're called Today and Tomorrow. So, we're trying to build our brand. Mm -hmm. We have a sponsor. Mm, okay. So we don't go meet with them until next week. Mm -hmm. So I just want some advice on what we should do and what we should aim. So who is we? Me, my boyfriend, my brother Sheldon, and my brother Joe. All right. And what's it about? Uh, we're just going to be basically about different topics about today's news. First and foremost, y'all need to come up with a one line about what this podcast is about so that you guys are focused, so that you understand. What's the name of the podcast? Today and Tomorrow. Okay, Today, Today and tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. And what makes your podcast unique for people who want to know, okay, why should I be tuning in? Uh, just about Nashville news because Nashville, we are a growing uh, city right. now. We're growing faster and faster. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to put Nashville on the map. You know, being that you guys are from Nashville, you guys could be all things Nashville. For a guy that's like me from New York, right. I could just focus so on so, so many things locally that, you know, everyone else globally will understand where you guys are coming from. I just want to say a few things. Number one, be patient with yourselves because what you started off as isn't what it's going to end up being. So allow the podcast to be able to evolve. Right. So that you guys are open to having conversations about what you think works, what doesn't work, because that's always going to happen. There's going to be things that you start off with that doesn't work, things that you feel like you need to add. I think it would be great for you guys to have an outline. So you know what you're talking about for each episode. You need to figure out what days are coming out. How long is it going to be? You need to be consistent. I think segments are really helpful so people know what they're going to be looking for when they come to your podcast. People will have a favorite segment that they want to make sure that they tune in for. You also should figure out, because there's four people on this podcast, what each person's role is going to be. And make sure that you sit down and, and figure out, okay, I'm going to be the person that is navigating the show that introduces a topic. Okay, well, I'm going to be the person that's always playing the devil's advocate. Well, I'm so you guys have specific roles that people know what to expect from you when they're listening to the show. Wow, Angela. Yes, ma'am. Who should he send an invoice to? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Goodness. Thank you. Thank you too, Blue Dot. Yes, sir. <laughs> and listen, lastly, make sure your sound is right because there's nothing worse 
than when you're listening to somebody's podcast and the sound is so bad you can't even listen to it. So I told her that the sound <laughs> got to be everything. Yeah, because I would tune right out if I'm like, oh, I can't listen to this. It sounds awful. This person's <laughs> low. This person's, you know, really loud. It don't sound good. It sounds like they in a bathroom. You know, all of those things do matter. Right. Thank you, guys. All, all right, right. No problem. Good luck. Thank y'all. All right. All right, B-Dot, get your publishing. They didn't make you a co-host after that consultation. <laughs> all right. Well, that was Ask Ye, 800-292-5150. Hopefully for anybody who's trying to do the same thing, that's some good information. And when we come back, we have Honey Baby joining us. She's from Jersey. She has her deluxe EP, three words, eight letters, out right now. And, I mean, she's got some things to say. It's a hot girl summer for real. It's way up. Everybody listen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is what y'all all been waiting for. Oh, oh, oh. You're tapped in the way up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And of course, Jasmine Brand is here. Yes. And and we got Honey Baby in the building. Yee, yee, yee. For the first time. <laughs> listen, Jasmine couldn't miss this because yes. um Effing Him Too is <laughs> Love that. Well, you know what's interesting though, because this song Effing Him Too. That's a great vibe. But it, even the sample of So Into You, if you think about what that song is about in the first place. Throwing a, yes, it's, it's connected. Yeah. Let's talk about taking somebody, like one of somebody's men. That was like a whole internet conversation. Everybody's like, why is she saying this? And then there's people like, do y'all know what the original is even about? Like, come well, on. Well, we didn't when it came I out. I did not. I just learned no? recently what it was really about. I didn't know. I just was singing Because you know you sing a song and you don't think about yeah. what the song is really saying. Whitney Houston, I remember my mom was such a big Whitney Houston fan. But the song that she has, Saving All My Love, that's really about her and somebody else's husband. Wait a minute. I was today eight years old. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, and you've Shaka got Khan your family too. and they need you there. Oh, yeah. She said a few stolen moments is all we have. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. I guess they were so uh, subliminal back right. then. <laughs> but not not you, girl. But Shaka, oh, no. oh, Shaka, what's Shaka Khan song? Shaka Khan. Um, hold on. This is my phone. The Shaka Khan. Oh, sweet song. thing. Okay. Sweet uh, thing. Even if you cannot stay. Yeah. Okay. Cannot stay. Yeah. I didn't even realize that either. Yeah. yeah. And that was about somebody else. You're not mine and I can't deny. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Said, Here is where you ought to be. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. It just sounds so pretty. It did. Yeah, it does. too sounds pretty too, but it, it it's does. Just in your it's face. Just yeah. It's just like, damn, girl. But they still was mad at you, girl. Oh, they was so <laughs> mad at me. They was like, oh my God. And I'm just like, I not effing your man. I'm just ever. a vessel. You, yeah. I'm just talking. Have like, you have you ever been in that position? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that person could be mad. But also you could have been with somebody, man, and you not know that. Right. Like, right. you could. I'm not out here looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to steal her man tonight. And yeah, I'm about to F him. And no, girl, I don't want your man. I don't want your stinky man. Okay. Just keep, like Miss, Miss Keep your man. Right now, from Asbury Park, New Jersey, Honey Baby's in the building. So the EP, the project is called Three Words, Eight Letters. And now you have a deluxe version. Yay. Okay. So let's talk about why you felt. Let's do this deluxe version. Because you have the Touch and Feature and Busta Rhymes, Touch and Feature and Cali. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, which is great that you got, because the first album, like the first Project EP originally didn't have features on it. Mm -mm, none at all. Mm -hmm. That was like my first project ever. And I was freshly signed. I don't know nobody in the industry. I didn't know nothing. I think was different from me to a lot of people is I'm really starting from the bottom mm -hmm. when I got discovered. What was the most exciting thing so far that's happened? Like somebody that's reached out to you or posted you or did a TikTok? Like what was... Uh-oh, who you about to say? Uh, Kehlani. Oh, <laughs> you nice. love Kehlani. We love Kehlani too. Yo, okay. I love Kehlani. I think the craziest thing that happened to me was going from like being this really big Kehlani fan and like really admiring her and her work. You know, like a week ago, we sitting in the strip club Okay. Vibing out. And it's like, yo, is this really my life right now? Like, what the nice. hell is going on? <laughs> All right, Jasmine Brand is here. And, of course, Honey Baby is here. We have more with her when we come back. Her EP, the deluxe version, is out right now. Three words, eight letters. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's what y'all been waiting for. Oh, oh, oh. You're tapped in the way up with Angela Yee. What up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. And right now we are talking to Honey Baby. Now you've talked a lot about manifesting things in the past. So what is the craziest thing that you've manifested for yourself? My life. Before I met my manager, I was like really grinding. Like I wasn't even like on the music tip. I was just 
still writing music and still like I know this is what I want to do but I can't pursue this fully right now and I was like in the club and I was in this really small apartment and like I was just like just trying to figure it out and I was like I'm only gonna do this for a year mm -hmm. and after this year working up, in the club yeah like okay. I'm gonna do this for a year and after this something's gonna happen something's gonna change my life my life is gonna change I'm never gonna have to do no I'm never gonna have to worry about nothing again and then I had this manifesting book and like I was reading it the other day like mm -hmm. I was like writing down like oh I'm living in my apartment and my big windows and it's like this and like that and I'm I'm in my apartment I'm looking at my book and I'm like what the f is oh, happening nice. yeah. right now yeah. <laughs> and then like just the way my like career is going right now like I didn't want nothing that was like gonna boom right in my face and I wouldn't be able to catch it right like I wanted something that I could catch and enjoy and you know really appreciate absorb. the the yeah. whole like get into a certain point the build yeah. like you said mm -hmm. you know the development exactly. of a career instead of having something big and viral and then it's like damn how do I catch up to that exactly and looking back it's like how did I go from summer of 2022 doing what I was doing and living how I was living and going through what I was going through to fast forward to summer 2023 and my whole life is completely different. Wow, that's crazy. Right now, from Asbury Park, New Jersey, Honey Baby's in the building. When you say what you were going through, like what type of things were you going through? I just was like struggling really bad. Um, I didn't know where life was going to take me. Like I was, again, living like sleeping on my mom's couch, but it's me, my mom, my nephew, my brother in a one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a lot going on. And then I just got really depressed. And I was just like, yo, I don't, I can't deal with this. Like my brain literally cannot process this. And then it just was like a switch. Like I was like, you know what? Maybe one day everything's going to come together. Maybe one day I'm not going to have to deal with this. Maybe one day my brain is not going to eat me alive. Everything is going to eat me alive. And now I'm just like a <laughs> flying bird. <laughs> and then to also think your mom held you down. Now you have opportunity to hold her down. Yes, she definitely held it down for me when I needed her the most. So I really appreciate that. Like, I'll give her the world. My mom, my stepmom, my nephew, and my sister, they really, they really held it down for me. So I... Whatever they want, they get. Well, thank you so much for coming through. We really did enjoy it. Three words, eight letters. I hate you, but I also love you. Yes. Those are the three words in the eight letters. I hate <laughs> you. I love you. Touching is definitely going crazy right now. Mm -hmm. So when I come out with this new album after this deluxe, I'm going to have about 25 touchings and it's going to be lit. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We I'm going to have me number one by the end of this year. I know, there we right. go. Put mm -hmm. it all out there. Yep. Thank Period. you so much, honey baby. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. And when we come back, you guys get to have the last word. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up With Angela Ye. What's up? It's Way Up With Angela Ye. I'm Angela Ye. Oh man, it's Friday. It's so hard to say goodbye though. It's so hard. <laughs> Bida, I do appreciate you rocking with me today though. Absolutely. It's been a hell of a week. Bida. But thank you to Honey Baby for joining us straight out of New Jersey. Yes. And also, um, today I'm actually going to be introducing the mayor, hey. Eric Adams. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> Don't do it, Bida. Don't you do it. He's from Queens just like you. He's also a party promoter. All right, but anyway, it's about the future of New York City. It's a networking event, so shout out to everybody who I'm about to see. Um, and can I be a plus one? You just. I'm, well, I guess I'm uninvited myself. Yeah, <laughs> Brian Millar, and of course, you guys uh, check out everything that you missed on Way Up with Ye. This show is about you. We want to make sure that you're actively participating. We love you. Be safe. Have a great weekend. And here you are with the last word. Hey, I just wanted to say I heard you was trying to hook up Mano the other day, and I definitely want to be one of the young ladies who you pick for a blind date for him. I don't know how I'm going to tell you, though, because it's supposed to be anonymous, but I definitely want to be one of those women. This is Vicky calling out of Franklin, Virginia. I want to shine a light on my fiancé of 12 years. Happy anniversary, baby. I love you. And happy heavenly birthday to my grandmother. You've been gone for 16 years. I love you and I miss you. Way up to Angela Yee. Going way up, turn up, turn up. with Angela Yee. Fuck.